Hi, I'm Paul Girada from Catalyst Resources. This is one of a series of three-minute videos focused on sharing the best SAS design principles. Today we're going to be discussing the SAS lifecycle and why it's essential that you optimize for your survival. Your application is in the middle of this diagram and ideally broken into modules of progressive functionality that can be added on by customers. The SaaS lifecycle are the business processes and activities that surround your core application and fall into four categories of acquisition, installation or provisioning, usage and commerce. As a senior executive, it's important for you to understand that the core solution will deliver your revenue. Simplification and automation of the activities in the SaaS lifecycle will provide your ability to scale and optimize your bottom line impact. In almost all cases, users expect to have some sort of demo or trial experience as part of the purchase process. Trust me, this can be a lot more challenging than it seems. Much if not all of your purchasing process should be online. Signing contracts that require paper copies and a salesperson will only result in loss of sales and increased selling costs. And you'll notice that the demand generation is outside of the solution and the life cycle. Regardless of what you build, you will have to have a separate demand generation activity. Once the solution is purchased, you go into the provisioning phase. The best designed SaaS solutions are deployed instantly and require minimal configuration. If custom branding is required, there needs to be a way of completing without requiring a separate code base. And users need to be easily onboarded and maintained right within the software without any involvement from your organization. Finally, you've gotten to the usage part of the product. If training is required, the expectation for SaaS is that it will be minimal and all online. As users use the product, you want to be able to track and maintain their activities. If you don't, it's like having a dinner party and not knowing who came. And you'll need to provide support, but design the support right into your software and nurture community, sharing, and crowdsourcing. We've worked with companies who've had first-year revenue equal to first-year support costs. So a word of caution, this could be an area of significant expense and impact. In the commerce area, the most critical thing you need to do is identify those metrics that will generate revenue. Is it the number of users at the end of the month? Is it the number of transactions, the amount of storage? All need to be carefully defined and captured. Once you do that, that gives you the opportunity to rely on some third-party resources for billing and support kinds of activities and reporting. You might use something like Zora as a billing solution. And the last thing you need to do in this commerce area is to allow people to upgrade and add more functionality on easily and when they want to. I would encourage each of you to carefully look at your SaaS lifecycle with the goals of simplifying and automating the activities that surround it, minimize the loss of churn of your customers at every step along the way, and constantly refine to enable you to scale and optimize your bottom line and maintain competitive advantage. If you'd like to discuss your SaaS lifecycle with Catalyst, feel free to contact us.